Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Another Resurrection Sunday, another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're thankful for another Resurrection Sunday, another day again that the Lord has made. Let us, again, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. This is the day. Amen. Amen. Good morning, looking home. The Lord has made. I will rejoice. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, be glad in it. Whoa, this is the day that the Lord has made. Good morning, Marcel Jones. rejoice and be glad. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, the Lord has made. Good morning, Deacon King. I will rejoice and be glad in it, glad in it. This is the day, the Good morning to the chambers, and be glad. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, I will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Another day, another day, another day that the Lord has made. Oh, my 
because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Amen. God is bigger than our pains and suffering and our problems if we just give it to him. Amen. He said, give it to me. I'll bear it. Give it to me. I'll share it. If there's a need in your life, the Lord can do it. He'll take it if you just, if you just only give it to me. That's what the Lord is saying. Just give me whatever it is. Amen. That you're heavy laden with. He said, I, I, I'll share it. I'll bear it for you. If you just give it to me. Amen. I can't thank you. Sister Randolph. Amen. Daddy White. Amen. For his faithfulness and just helping us out to help usher in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We celebrate another Resurrection Sunday. Again, another day that the Lord has made. We just need to keep reminding ourselves that it's God who has made this day. Amen. I'm so grateful for his faithfulness. A, a new, what it says, uh, new mercies each morning I see. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Again, for Marcella Jones, Olivia Jones, good morning to the Kid family, to the Victor's Chambers family, Joyce Garrett, amen. Karen Walker, God bless you. Deja Cook, amen. Deacon and Sister Tucker, God bless you. Olibra Bailey, once again, from all the way from Los Angeles, California, God bless you this morning. Deacon and Sister Wanda Williams, Toy Masterson, God bless you. Amen. Family, good to see Toy on this morning. Amen. We thank God for all of you. Sister Carter, God bless you this morning. We thank God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Monique Chambers, God bless you again. Amen. Sister Erling Hill, amen. amen. We just thank God for all of you that are signed on as you come on. If you just we just type your name, but just let us know you that just say good morning, just a GM, just say hi. Hello, just let us know that you're there. Type your name so we'll know. I don't know if you, when you start typing, it automatically puts your name there now, but let us know that you're on Facebook Live. And again, to our faithful listeners on our conference call, I know yeah, Sister Echo, Sister Jones, Sister Daly, Deacon Hall, again, uh, Sister Otha Lee, yeah. Sister Raleigh from Chicago. I mean, we're just thanking everybody. If I missed anybody's name, you'd be Sister Gates and Sister. Mayola Jenkins is with us. Amen. So I don't know who's all there today because they cannot communicate with me. 
but we thank God for the faithfulness of our conference call. Amen. Uh, people, amen. Thankful for those who joined in at Sunday school this morning. In our Sunday school lesson, we thank God for all of you, amen, who joined in this morning. So God is a good guy. God, uh, uh, he, he's yet alive, amen. He's yet alive. And regardless of what's going on around us, God still sits on the throne, amen. He, he's so good. He's so good. Uh, and Daddy White wants me to just share with everybody else a, a hearty thank you for those of you that are Showed your expressions of love on yesterday uh, by coming through in the parking lot to share his 90th birthday. Amen. 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 The Lord has blessed him. Amen. Uh, 90 years. Amen. Yeah. Thank God for him. And he wanted me to make sure we let everybody know. We're thankful for all the cards of expressions and just the, those that took time to stop by and say hello. Amen. We got him real good. He was truly surprised. So we thank you guys for showing your kindness. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Again, we want to uh, remember our sick and shut in. We know we, again, we have a, a, a very lengthy list. Amen. Good morning to all those who are signing on on our, amen, uh, free conference call. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, but uh, again, our, our list has been added to every week. And we know the Lord has called some home. Uh, that we have on our list, but we thank God again. He's still sovereign. He's still God, and beside Him, there is no other. Uh, but we want to remember Sister Maxine Pierre, who's home from the hospital. We want to keep her lifted up. The Slaughter family and their bereavement, the loss of the grandmother uh, Dolores Bell, the Bell family. Amen. We want to keep them lifted up again. Our own Deacon Mike Brown. Yes, we claim him as our own. Yes, uh, we yes, still lift yes. him up in the loss yes. of Patricia Brown. Amen. 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 We know it's not a loss. Amen. We know where she was, but we know she was a she was, uh, amen, a foot soldier for the Lord. Amen. 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 And we just thank God for Patricia Brown and, and her faithfulness and to the church and, and, and at her post of duty. Amen. amen. And all that she did. We're going to miss her humor. We're going to miss, amen. Uh, we're just going to miss Sister Patricia Brown. But let's continue to lift up Deacon Mike Brown. He said he's feeling a little better. His cough is subsiding more and more, more and more each day. And we thank you for the acts of kindness that have been extended to Deacon Mike. During this time, this is Arnetti Jones. We want to continue to lift her up. Our brother Sean Gardner had a knee replacement the other day, last Monday. Uh, let's keep him lifted up. Sister Karen Walker, uh, she still recovers. Again, um, Sister Washam is on our list. Isidore Moon, Olivia Jones, Katrina Randolph, Jay Clad, the III, Alicia uh, Allison, excuse me, Getting, uh, Sister Brim, Charlene Brim, uh, Joyce Baxter in the bereavement of the Lewis Taylor and the Cooksey family. We want to keep them lifted in prayers again sister fanny nichols and brother richard nichols and their bereavement we want to continue to lift them in prayer emma wilson family and their illness Tracy randall as she continued to recover from covid uh, uh, george friends uh mcreynolds uh, lifted her up paula stone paula stone again reverend daniel child and his family as he recovered again uh, my cousin virginia McClure, but through kentucky who was hospitalized we pray for them we still want to pray for the wildell Hudson family. We've had him on the list a while and he transitioned and he's with the Lord. My first cousin out in Los Angeles, California, we, we lift him up and then our own dear lifelong friends, Wayne and Francis Jackson, uh, we lift them up this morning. Amen. We lift them and their families up. Amen. And people are still dealing uh, with this COVID. And, and who's that? Sister Randolph? Uh, yeah, Jacqueline Smith. Thank you. We didn't get her name on here. Jacqueline Smith. Uh, another cousin. Uh, we want to again uh, lift these families up. And there are many more we know that are under the doctor's care. But we know God knows all. If I didn't call your name, God knows. God knows <clears throat> what's going on in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we just know that God again is still sovereign. He's still sitting high and he looks low. And most of all, we know that God cares. He has not forgotten us. Regardless of what went on the other day at the Capitol building, God has not forgotten us. He said in his word that we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. God is going to take care of us. Amen. The thing is, do you want to be taken care of? Amen. Uh, do, do you want to stay wrapped up in the, the arm, his arms? Amen. Do we want to be kept by his power? Amen. You got to want to be kept. Amen. And the Lord sure will do it, for he is a faithful God. 
Hey, Amen. I response to reading again from uh, Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And our vision model, pouring oil for the lamps of men to light the world. Again, we believe that the oil for men's lamp, for them to see their way, is the word of God. Every opportunity we get, we ought to be sharing the word of God with as many people as possible. Amen. Amen. We need to share the word of God with as many as we can. He said, redeem the time. Make the, take the opportunity. Amen. We know that God, uh, he, he's looking down upon us. and He's looking to see how the church is going to respond in, time, respond in times like these. Amen. Again, he said, look out. The harvest is white. It, it's ready to be harvested. But pray to the Lord of the harvest that he'll send forth more laborers unto the vineyard. Amen. We may not be able to go to the physical building at 3800 East 73rd Street, but we are the church. We are the church, and we ought to be able to still be able to get on our phones and call people. Since we cannot do no social distancing, we still can get on the phone. We still can use the mail and still can use social media and all these different platforms to reach out to people to let them know that God still reigns, that God loves you, that God cares for you. And we should be willing to do that even more and more. And we all have to do better in our Bible study. We're in home now to read our Bibles more, to study more, and to meditate more on the things of God. And surely he has given us enough to think about, to pray about, to fast about, and to share with one another just in the last few days. Um, so we're just thankful that things are as well as they are. Amen. Things could have gotten a lot worse. It was bad enough as it was. Amen. But we know that God is still sovereign. It, it, it could have went on and on and on. Amen. And we need to pray since these same people are talking about coming back to Washington on November 17th. They, they was already on social media talking about round two. Church, we still need to pray. They're advocating. Some have said this time, bring your guns. It could get very violent. We need to pray if the Lord don't intervene. But you know, sometimes I just believe that the Lord is allowing this thing to happen so that man can see just how evil this world is. And man can see that he that we don't need the Democrats, we don't need the Republicans, we don't need the independents, we don't need Congress, we need the we don't need the Constitution. We need Jesus, amen. That's what this world needs now, amen. I think that's what D.I. Warwick, I, you know, I don't know what she was talking about, but the world needs now is love, sweet love, and it's the love of Christ that we need, because if we love one another, amen, we're not going to go after each other like we're seeing it happen in the name of patriotism, amen. Amen. I, again, God is going to hold us accountable, amen, for everything we've said and done in this life, amen, and surely those that were responsible for last January 6th at the Capitol grounds, the very seat of our democracy, will be held accountable, amen, for what's been said and what's been done. So we just, again, church, need to continue to pray. When we even look at our evangelicals, amen, and the mixed, uh, amen, commentaries about what's going on with them, I tell you, a person who doesn't know the Lord would be very confused right now because they're hearing so many mixed messages. Amen. Many mixed messages. But we got to continue to pray and ask God to do what he does best. Get into what God is up to. Amen. That he'll clean up this mess. And he said he's going to put it in order when he comes. Amen. God is going to do it. He said, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Amen. Amen. But we know in this flesh, it, it, it rouses us and get us disturbed. A righteous indignation. So we just know we must, must continue to pray for our world and its condition. Amen. Again, we thank God for Sister Randolph and Brother White, and they're going to uh, uh, give us another song again as we thank those that are coming on. Amen. We thank God for you, those who are still uh, calling in. Continue to call in. Tell your friends. you got a couple minutes. Amen. As we share a few words. Amen. Just in a few minutes. Amen. Amen. Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Again, we say good morning. We see the, the Getting family have signed on. God bless you. I think I heard the voice. Amen. Starnetti Jones and Sister Stevenson and Sister Polk. I think I heard Sister Polk. Amen. God bless you again. If I did call out your name, we let you know that we love you. We thank God for you on today for being with us. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father. A most righteous God, holy God, Lord, the magnificent God, the awesome God. Father God, we just call on your name this morning because you're the God of yesterday, today, and from forevermore. And Master, as we approach your throne, we, Lord, ask you to search our hearts once again. Lord, forgive us of our sins, our transgressions, things we've done and thought were to do. Lord, that's made you unhappy. We ask for forgiveness right now. Lord, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Oh, Father God, we sing a song, What Can Wash Away My Sins? 
We know nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, we plead the blood right now on our nation, on our world. Lord, on our elected officials. Lord, we plead the blood of Christ on every situation. Father God, that's not like you, Father God. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you just look down upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us, Father God. For well, surely we need you all today. Oh, Father God, we lift up all the names that have been called on our sick roll. Father God, those that, Lord, we may not know about, Lord, but you know everything. You know all about it. We lift them up to you right now. Somebody needs you, Lord. Stop by here. Somebody's praying, Lord. Stop by here. And while on others, thou art calling. Lord, do not pass us by. Oh, Lord, we just love you today. We thank you. We praise you. We bless your name for all you've done and things you get to do concerning our lives. Lord, we thank you for this format that we have on today, Father God. And Lord, have you given us some means to stay connected? We pray, Father God, that we continue, Lord, to uh, better ourselves, Lord, to give, uh, have a spirit of excellence and do the best we can to reach others for Christ, to help encourage one another, Lord, as we move again through these COVID times. Lord, praying for those crowded hospitals, overcrowded hospitals and youth workers and not youth workers, but Father God, you know, the first line workers, Lord, the staff in hospitals, nurses and doctors, Father God, firemen and police and ambulance drivers, Father God, we just pray, Lord, for those who have left their families to come out and to help us that are sick and afflicted by these diseases, Lord, and, and, and that's on top of Lord, what's already going on in our lives, Lord. We just pray for those who are have a merciful spirit to help others and do what they've been trained to do, Lord. We lift them up to you. We know they're growing tired. They're growing weary. Lord, we're praying for those families, Lord, as, as the number of, of deaths still escalates. Lord, we pray that people's hearts will be touched, to have compassion for one another, that we continue to wear our masks and social distance and do the things, Father God, that we've been asked to do to try to do what we can to mitigate this horrific disease. Oh, Father God, we just thank you for all church doors that are open in your name. Those that are still preaching and teaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Praying for those churches, Father God, that do not have pastors right now because you've called them home to glory, Lord. And those who have been succumbed to this COVID, Lord, we still know that it's real. It's not fake news. This, this, this sickness, this pandemic is real. So, Father God, help us to do all we can while we can to share the good news of Jesus Christ and him crucified. And Lord, if there's somebody who don't know you, the part of their shit, that may come running saying, what must I do to be saved? Now, Father God, we ask more of thee and less of me. More and more of thee and less and less of me. More, more and more of thee and less and less and less of me. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We pray that you have your Bibles close by. We ask too that you have some pencils and pens. Amen. For those of you that want to take notes, we're going to, amen. We want to share with you with some scriptures today. And we pray that you can write them down. We might not be able to expand them and read them all to you. Uh, we want to be uh, respectful of the time, but we also want to be able to share what the word of God has said about these times. We know that the Bible is relevant. The Bible is relevant. The Bible speaks to the very things that we see that are happening in our world right now. Amen. Written over 2,000 years ago. What was written, uh, he said, the flower faded and the flock grass withered, but the word of God shall stand forever. Yes, we see different translations, but the word of God has stood the test of time. Amen. No books have been added to it. Nothing has been taken away. And we can read in our Bible today and see how relevant the Bible is. And to the Christian, if we stay in the word of God, we should not be surprised about what we are seeing in our world. Amen. The Bible says we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We know that the devil himself said, I'm seeking whom I may devour. And he also was bold enough to tell us he's not just staying in one place. On he said, I'm going to and fro. And fro. <laughs> Frontward, backwards, up and down well, throughout well, the whole well, earth. Well. He's coming and has been here to cause yeah. 
havoc to the kingdom of God and to this world. Amen. That's what it's all about. And we're not ignorant to what is going on. But yes, we're we're, we're a little surprised. Our friend was saying, you know, we can't believe this happened. We say all them things, but when we just take the time and stop and and, and breathe and say, you know what, the Bible speaks of these things. Amen. Uh, we just sometimes think that will we see it in our lifetime? Yes, we have. Amen. Yes, we have. We have seen it. Amen. And so I, I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful that there are others who see it that don't look like me. That I'm praying that more of them will come out and speak against yeah. what we have seen. Because that's what needs to happen. Somebody said, I, I believe, uh, uh, some have said it was Martin Luther King that said, some have said it was uh, Frederick Dulles that said this quote, that in order for evil to continue, it's for good men to do nothing. Yeah. Again, in order for evil to prevail, to win, to have victory, is for good men to do nothing. Right. There's a song that says, say something. <laughs> Somebody ought to be saying something yeah. Yeah. about yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and we live in a world today that certain people are heard, their voices are heard. Jesus. And they still yeah. are saying the same message that had been said for hundreds of years. Uh, but we find even the word of God said that a prophet is not even honored in his own country. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise us when people don't hear my voice. Amen. Some have not heard my voice as a pastor. Amen. Amen. Those shepherds that I have. But we have others who will come and will say the same thing. But we hear it. And that's all right. As long as we hear what thus said the Lord. And that just happens, has to happen every now and then. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ecclesiastes 1. Yes, Ecclesiastes 1. For the next few minutes, just want to share with you Amen. some of the relevancy of our Bible, how relevant it is mm -hmm. in today's time. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. We know Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon, mm -hmm. who was considered to be the wisest man who ever walked the face of the earth. Now, mm -hmm. we're seeing we're not Jesus was holy. He was fully God and fully man. But as far as a man, the one who was made a little lower than the angel, God had so blessed Solomon to be very wise. Now read from the King James Version also. We may look at the HCSB version of Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. That's the Old Testament right behind Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Okay? Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Now if you back there with Hebrew, James, and First and Second Peter, you're, you're way too far. That's the New Testament. Come on back to about the middle of your Bible for the book of Ecclesiastes. Amen. And it reads as thus. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Amen. A HCSB translation said, what has been, what has been is what will be. And what has been done is what will be done. The part B of that, and that's what we want to focus on today, if you will, as a backdrop. There is nothing new under the sun. Amen. That's simply what I want to talk about. Rebellion. Nothing new under the sun. Rebellion. Nothing new under the sun. Uh, you can stick the word sedition in there. Nothing new under the sun. Revolt. Nothing new under the sun. Civil disobedience, nothing new under the sun. Have y'all gotten that yet? There's nothing new under the sun. All that we see happening in our world today, the stubbornness, the stiff neckness, all that we see, the crime, the hatred, the, the sickness, the pandemic, there is nothing new under the sun. And in view of the activities of, uh, of the last week in our country, in regards to national and state elections, it has been a uh, an emotional roller coaster, to say the least. Amen. We have witnessed the bitter and the sweet. The Georgia runoff election was favorable and historic. Amen. In turning the state from a red Republican state to a Democratic blue state. How sweet that was. Amen. Georgia, over 200 years old, but yet had never had a black official as we have now with a pastor 
of Warnock. Amen. Over 200 years. So history was made. So we feel that, yes, some progress is being made. But a few days later, just a short time later, amen, as the world watch, to some in bitter dismay, the attempted coup of our democracy in the very literal seat of our Constitution at the Capitol. Amen. Millions across this globe witnessed the siege of our capital, the uprising, the revolt, the insurrection, the seditious attack on our capital building, again, the seat of our democracy. Thank God the business at hand was only delayed and not destroyed nor well, defeated. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was only delayed, mm -hmm. not destroyed nor defeated. For had it been otherwise, then the victory would have gone to the seditious mob and any other group or faction would feel that when disgruntled against the government, they too could storm our democracy. Our hearts go out to the victims who lost their lives during this unrest. Mm -hmm. However, this uprising is not the first and surely will not be the last in this world of today. Sedition is not a new thing. I'd rather, I, I'd like to share some definitions, if I may, not to insult anybody's intelligence, but rather to gain a better understanding, amen, of some of these words. Uh, sedition is, if you will, defined as incitement of resistance to or insurrection against lawful authority. Again, it's defined, sedition is uh, as uh, um, incitement of resistance to or against, insurrection against lawful authority. You see that word incitement. Amen. The action of provoking unlawful behavior or urging someone to behave unlawfully. Egging on. Urging. Goading. Spurring on, stirring up, whipping up, stoking up, kindling, fueling, arousing, persuasion, inducement. All these things we have seen for several years now. Amen. And when we see the incitement of what people do, again, is nothing new under the sun. The word insurrection is defined as an act or instance of revolting against civil authority or an established government. Amen. An act or instance of revolting against civil authority or an established government. And those who do these things are called insurgents. He's one who acts contrary to the politics and decisions of one's own political party. Amen. A lot want to take high ground now. They want to say all the right things now. Things they should have said years ago. The whole folk accountable. It didn't happen. They've edged on. They have contributed to uh, is inspiring and encouraging people to do wrong. Amen. Uh, we find that the Bible clearly speaks to these emotions. That's why we say there's nothing new under the sun. Hatred jealousy, strife, stubbornness, rebellion, yes, yes, revolt. Yes, yes. Nothing is new under the sun. The Bible speaks to these. And that's what we want to look at here in the next few minutes. Amen. Ephesians 6, 4 uh, warns us that fathers provoke not your children to wrath. Amen. Don't provoke your children to wrath. They're, they're just children. And when you uh, upset them so, they're going to do things that may be unlawful because they're so upset. Or they do things to be disrespectful to a parent or to a spouse or to an adult. So the Bible says, provoke not, Ephesians 6, 4, your children to wrath. But look on what it says. But bring them up in the nurture, that is the encouragement and the care and the admonition, which is, if you will, the counsel, the warning of the Lord. Yes, yes. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Encouraging our children, caring for our children. And warning them and admonishing and encouraging them and, and and to try to get them to 
come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in the part of their sin. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Not provoking one another to wrath. And that's what we witnessed the other day. Amen. Matthew, uh, amen. Let me go to Proverbs. You turn your Bible to the book of Proverbs, if you will. The book of Proverbs. Again, right before Job, Psalms, Proverbs. Amen. The book of Proverbs. Amen. Proverbs is the book of wisdom. Amen. That shares with us many, many uh, uh, scriptures dealing with wisdom. But Proverbs 6.16. <clears throat> Amen. Proverbs 6.16. I'm going to read from the ESV translation. I'm going to stay there for, for a minute. Proverbs 6.16. It says... There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are an abomination to him. That mean, abomination means that they're detestable to God. Amen. It says, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans. Is that in your Bible? Feet that make hate to run to evil. A false witness who breathes out lies and one who sows discord among brethren. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. People who revolting against authority, against establishment. Amen. And if we believe that the word of God it is the, if we believe this word of God is the absolute authority of God, then whatever thus said the Lord, we should not go against it. So when we go against this authority, uh -huh. we are being seditious. We are being rebellious. Yes, yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes. No, I didn't get a whole bunch of amens on that. On, Look at uh, 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 6. While we're in that 6, go up to that 14th verse of Proverbs 6. Amen. It says, uh, with diverted, I'm, I'm sorry, with perverted heart devises evil. Continually sowing discord continually sowing discord amen folks we we've seen it for the last four years amen it matters not whether you're republican democratic independent black white jew or gentile there are people that are continually sowing discord amen and causing people to get up in an uproar Amen. If you speak the truth, that's one thing. That's what the Bible says later on. The Bible tells us we can speak the truth in love. That's how God says we're supposed to work things out. Speak the truth in love. But when lies are continued to fester and continue to go on and on and on. And if there is an issue, then it can be dealt with by our Constitution, and that's in the court of law. Drop down to verse 18. Amen. It, it, again, it says, a heart that devises wicked plan feet again that make haste to run to eat amen some folks just couldn't wait to step inside amen our capital building the seat of our democracy folks as you look at those flags I, and i never was in the war but my family member my father i mean people that have fought bled and died for us to have freedom of speech and, and the freedom that we have but we too can go out of bounds with the freedom that we have amen we, we, can, we can take advantage of it amen and in the 1800s you know the confederates wanted to take over our capital they wanted the united states to be a confederate establishment and thank god for the army that they did not allow the confederate flag to be hoisted on the dome of our capitol building but yet we saw the other day the Confederate flag inside our Capitol building. There is nothing new on this side. People fighting all the time. But amen, it was rejected because people stood up. Amen. Let's look at uh, uh, Ephesians. Let's go to the New Testament. Where is Proverbs 26? Why are we in Proverbs? Proverbs 26 and 20. Proverbs 26 and 20. Proverbs 26 and 20. Amen. It reads as thus. 
For lack of wood, watch this, this is the translation. For lack of wood, the fire goes out. For lack of wood, the fire goes out. In other words, there, there is nothing for the fire to feed on if wood is not present. That's what he's saying. Look what else it says in that 21st. And where there is no whisperer, quarreling ceases. In other words, the talebearers, the gossipers, if there was no whispering, but well, you know what he did, you know what she did, you know what they said, you know what she said, all that causes quarreling. Amen. Amen. We looked at the thieves, we looked at the robbers, we looked at the uh, uh, murderers, amen, as he is crimes and, and things that cause problems in our society. But what about the whisperers? What about the Bible calls them the busybodies? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If everybody else's business, amen. The songwriter says, sweep around your own front door before you come sweeping around mine. Amen. Amen. The Bible, the Lord Jesus himself said, he who is without sin cast the first stone. But again, for the lack of wood, the fire goes out. And, and if we just, if, if there's no whispering, if there's no gossiping, if there's no tailbearing, quarrels cease. There won't be no fight. So nobody talking behind your back. You know how many, again, we find the good and the bad, the very sweet. It's good for us to have this platform with social media, but do you also know social media has caused a lot of violence in some communities? Because people are getting on social media, they're fighting with their words. And then they're meeting each other after school or in the workplace or, or someplace else. I mean, they're stalking people, all because of words that are said in social media, uh -huh. causing quarrels and fight. Amen. Our dear friend, amen. Uh, amen. Oh boy, can't think of his name. But he always said that anytime you think of the web, the world wide web, he said every web has a spider. Yes, amen. That web didn't just get there by itself. Mm -hmm. So, again, we got to take the bitter with the sweet. We also have to learn how to control and be accountable mm -hmm. as to what God has given us to use. Yeah. Amen. It, it's a great tool, but if you abuse it, it's a different story. Amen. Turn to you at the uh, uh, Romans. Let's look at Romans 16 and 17. Romans, the New Testament. Romans 16 and 17. I'm going to try to go look at Romans 16 and 17 because I want you guys to see it and read along with me. Romans 16, the 17th and 18th verse. Romans 16, 17 and 18. It reads as us. Still reading from the NV translation. I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. The Bible is very clear. Stay away from them. Those who cause division, those who cause dissent, those who cause strife and quarrels. Stay away from them. Amen. For such persons do not serve our Lord Jesus but their own appetites. Uh, we ought to be thinking about some things that we've seen in the last few days, last few years, people that are serving their own appetites. That's what's causing the problem. Amen. And, the, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the heart of the naive. They deceive the heart. There's some folks that just don't know no better. But again, as in our Bible study, we just started First Timothy. Talk about false doctrine, folks. False doctrines are real. Again, there is nothing new under the sun. False doctrines are all around us. And we still see the doctrines, the teachings, and all this, that uh, the mindset, the conspiracy theories, all these things that are negative in nature, that are without proof, are being cast among many people. It's one thing to spread the truth and be excited about it when you know it's the truth. But when you know something to be alive and you spread it, it causes problems. Amen. Amen. Let's look at, that was uh, Romans uh, 16, 17, 18. Uh, let's look at uh, Galatians. They just keep walking that way. First and second Corinthians, Galatians, then Ephesians. Galatians. Amen. The fifth chapter. 
19 through 21. 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen. Amen. Read the rest of it for yourself. That's Galatians telling us how we should walk by the Spirit and all these things. If we have love in our hearts. Uh, my heart went out to the policeman that was crushed behind the door. Amen. And people pushed in. They had no regard for life. No regard whatsoever. Amen. And for authority. Turn if you get over to Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians. And in the fifth chapter. Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5 and 11. Ephesians 5 and 11. Just write them down. If you have time to turn, just write them down. Ephesians 5 and 11. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 11. Let me focus my eyes here. Ephesians 5 and 11. And it's read as does from the e, uh, ESV. Take no part in the unfruitful works. The unfruitful works. Is that in your Bible? Of darkness. But instead, what? Expose them. Take no part in it. But instead, expose them. Amen. I believe we have a lot of Christians with their head in the sand. Amen. We have folk who, amen, as I uh, saw, amen, uh, the other day, uh, kumbaya moments. We want to have kumbaya moments. You know, God by here, but, but we are not getting our hands dirty and telling the truth and exposing the evil, the racial injustices, the, the, the sedition, the rebellious that we have. Amen. Many uh, politicians are taking the high ground now. Well, they took, should have taken the high ground four years ago. A little too late. Amen. But again, all will be held accountable. But it says in that 11th verse of Ephesians, you are talking about Ephesians 5 and 11, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. The Bible again tells us, mark them who are unruly. Don't just let them keep acting crazy. Mark them who are unruly. Amen. What the Lord has told us to do. Amen. Uh, uh, let's look at Titus. Is that Galatians? Well, look here. We're still in, we didn't look at Galatians 6 1, did we? We missed Galatians 6 1. Turn back to Galatians 6 1. Back to the left of your Bible. If you still have your Bible open. Galatians 6 1. Amen. My periphery says, bear one another's burdens. It says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. But he goes on to say, but, the, but keep watching yourself. Let you too be tempted. Well, well. Amen. Amen. We're, we're just supposed to try to help straighten each other out. But, but, but we got to also guard our hearts also. Amen. So the Lord lets us know how things should be done. Amen. When we are upset or whatever the case might be and then we find in titus amen first and second timothy titus philemon hebrews i believe it is titus and then first second thessalonians first and second timothy and then i believe it's titus did i get that right yes titus the third chapter 9 3 11 3 9 3 11 he said, but avoid foolish controversy, genealogies, dissension, and quarrels about the law, for they are unprofitable and worthless. As for a person who stirs up division, after warning him once and then twice, have nothing more to do with him, knowing that such a person is warped and sinful, he is self-condemned. 
Now the Bible calls it your war. Not my, it's what the Bible has called. People that are twisted, amen, because of they're not adhering to admonishment. No, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. Folks, listen, the Bible is very clear. In Matthew 5 and 9, in the Beatitudes, when Christ said, Blessed are the what? Peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. God wants us to be peacemakers. Amen. He wants us to be peacemakers. He said, if at all possible, that which relies in you, live peacefully with all men. As much as lies in you. So we all have a responsibility to be as peaceful, God-loving as we can. In Matthew 18, and, uh, 18, chapter 15 to the 21st, let us know how we're to do, if you will, uh, church discipline. Amen. How you're supposed to go to your brother. He doesn't listen to you. You go to him again. And the third time, uh, you take a witness. I'm sorry, the second time. The third time, you bring him before the church. You bring him before church leadership. You bring him before the pastor. And if the person still will not mend their way, the Bible says that we are to kick them out of the church. Still pray for them, that their hearts will be turned, that their hearts will change, and, and the, so that they will have, because he tells them, you've got a ministry of reconciliation. But in other words, but when a hard head, somebody who's stubborn and stiff neck, when they continue to sow seeds of division and cord, seeds of discord, that's how the church had told us to deal with it. Yes, we find King Solomon. When he said that there is nothing new under the sun, the prophet Ezekiel, in Ezekiel 2, 1 and 3, we know that Ezekiel was called of God. And why did God call Ezekiel? God called him because he wanted Ezekiel to go speak to the children of Israel. And as you read chapter 2, the word rebellious keep coming up. Because God kept saying they are a rebellious nation. They're not going to listen to you, Ezekiel. Why? Because they didn't listen to me. Well, well. And he keeps repeating that. But you go speak to them anyhow. Mm -hmm. But they're going to turn deaf ears on you. But go talk to them anyhow. Well. They're not going to believe what you said. But go speak to them anyhow. Because they are stubborn. They are stiff-necked. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's what the Lord God uh, declared to them in Ezekiel 2. So he called prophets to deal with rebellion. And that's what the children of Israel were, a rebellious nation. Amen. Sedition has been a part of this wicked world. So says the Bible, which makes the Bible relevant again in times like this. If you look at Acts 24 and 5, amen, as Felix stands, as Paul stood before Felix in Acts 24 and 5. His accusers threw all kind of names at him. Amen. That he was a pestilence. You know, pest, you know, they get irritable, you know, when flies buzz around you, wasps and bees, and all kind of flying. There's a, and they were saying he's a bothersome. Amen. That's what they were saying. He's a bothersome. They went on to say that he was, if you will, uh, 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 a, a mover of sedition. The word sedition is in the Bible, because somebody's going to say, is that in the Bible? Is that in the Bible? Is that word in the Bible? Uh, I'm getting ready to show it to you, the ESV translation. And if you have a, a, a study, a word study, you can look at it for yourself. Amen. You said, Acts Roman, Romans, what? I'm sorry, Acts 24 and 5. Amen. Again, ESV translation. Sometimes you got to go to other translations to get different words so you better understand the scripture. But you got to be careful with translations also. Amen. We want to put that in there. Amen. Acts 24 and 5. You have it say amen. He says in that verse, For we have found this man a plague, one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world and is a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Again, the King James Version says he's a ringleader, say he's a pestilent. But use the word sedition. That's that's the riots. Amen. So again, it's in the Bible. But verse 13, Paul, when he defended himself, he says, Listen, these people, they cannot prove all these accusations against me. Ain't that something? They cannot prove. Neither can they prove the 13th verse 
to you what they say now bring up against me again we have a lot of folks still talking about fraud still talking about this that and the other but then we have the right to go to the courts and things have gone to the court all the way to the supreme court and still no factual basis have been found so why are evangelicals still talking about voter fraud you are throwing wood on the fire amen you're throwing wood on the fire amen that's what they're doing this should remind us of what we find in first peter as you go toward the amen we're about our time is about up toward the back of your bible first peter first second third peter amen find first peter 2 12 through 17. Uh, please read this in the entirety when you when you when you can. I mean, First Peter, the second chapter, twelve through seventeen. He says, "Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation." He he said as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passion of the flesh that 11th verse which wage war against your soul keep your conduct among the gentiles honorable yes he's speaking to the jews but again not written to it but written for us there's many uh, 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 a lot of articles about pastors and christians who went to this rally who are given their reasons why they went amen to these rallies and again, they got caught up. Some of them did. Not all of them, but some of them got caught up. But uh, sedition is real. We must understand that God has shared with the people that we're supposed to live as servants of God. We are to submit to authority. And that's what he says in the 13th verse of First Peter 2 and 13. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme, are two governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. There's nothing new under the sun. Folks, we have seen it. Amen. Romans 14, 16 through 19, the Lord encouraged us. To follow after peace. Romans 14, 16 through 19. My time is gone. But Romans 14, 16 through 19. It tells us to follow after peace. That's what God wants us to do. And then when you look back at Romans 13, when God is so ordained, folks, we got to read it. Romans 13, when God is so ordained, every every government, everything is it, God's doing. How can we overtake what God has put in place? We can only do it by our. our constitutional right again that God allowed. He said, let every person, Romans 13 and 1, be subject to the government governing authority. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. So therefore, that second verse, you need to see it very carefully. Whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment amen amen keep reading for yourself i'm telling you this bible is real folks it's relevant again the lord lets us know exactly what's going on today but our position and what we're supposed to do and how we should do it amen you know luke 23 and 13 i have down here the, the emphasis in uh, uh the luke 23 Amen. Uh, 19 through the, and the 25th verse. You know, Jesus went before Pilate. Amen. He went before Pilate. He was gone because he'd been sentenced to die. And all the accusers that came before the Lord. Amen. And we find in that, again, ESV translation of Luke 23, 13 through 25, that when Pilate told the crowd, he told the mob, I find no fault in Jesus. All that you're bringing up, all these accusations, I find no fault in him. But because of the custom, I'm supposed to release a prisoner to you every year during this festival time. 
So who do you want to release? And they cried out, Barabbas, Bara release Barabbas. And the Bible said that Barabbas, he was arrested for sedition. Folks, he was arrested for sedition and murder. That's why he was put in prison. Because he uh, uh, was involved with sedition, with rebellion, with revolt against authority. And he was a murderer. And Pilate said, well, then what should I do with Jesus? The same mob cried out, crucify him, crucify him. Amen. Pilate said, I wash my hands of this man. This, my hands are innocent of this blood that's going to be shed. There are some that can't say that about who those who died a few days ago. Their hands are not clean. Amen. Because they are just as guilty. They need to be held accountable. But we know that Jesus was whipped all night long. That we know that a crown was put up on his head. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches us. We know they whipped him. He was so tired that he couldn't make it all the way up the hill carrying that cross. And Simeon stepped up and carried the cross. And if you look at all the depictions of Simeon, he was a man of a dark hue. Amen. That carried the cross of Christ. And Jesus was nailed at the cross. He was lifted up at the cross. Is that what your Bible says? He was given vinegar mingled with God when he said, I thirst at the cross. Amen. Uh, and, and we find out that he saved the thief at the cross. He said, today you should be with me in paradise. He took care of his mother, her future welfare at the the cross. Child, behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. He wasn't talking about himself. He was carrying his mother to the hands and responsibility of his disciple, John. Amen. He spoke to his father at the cross. He forgave evil men's sins at the cross. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They should be our prayer today. All the evil that we saw January the 6th at our capital, the overtaking of our government, we should pray, Lord, forgive them. For they don't know what they're doing. They don't know they're going against your word. They don't know they're going against your authority, Lord, because you put the capital in place. You gave the power to the United States. Amen. It was at the cross. At the cross. Where he gave up the ghosts. At the cross. Amen. Where he was taken down. Amen. And buried in a ball too. Amen. But early, 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 Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. He conquered death. He conquered the grave. So that one day you and I too will conquer the same. Amen. Yes, there's nothing new under the sun, saints. Insurrection and sedition are part of this life. Rebellious, rebellion and stubbornness is a part of this life. Trouble, heartaches, and pain are a Heart of this life. Jesus reminded us that we live in a crooked and perverse generation. But he, but the, the but he himself told us to be a good cheer. He has overcome the world. Amen. If one day there will be peace in the valley, that peace will only come if you have the peace of God in your life. Welcoming Jesus, the Prince of Peace, into your hearts. Do you want that peace today? Amen. That surpasses all understanding. Then choose the Lord today. Choose the Lord today. Just pray this simple prayer. Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. And I believe that the Lord God, the Father, raised you from the dead. And I believe that one day you're coming back again. Amen. And I invite you into my heart right now. Amen. If you prayed that prayer. Amen. Welcome to the house of God. Welcome to his family. As, as a, a Christian, getting to a church that's preaching and teaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. God bless you and God keep you. I thank God for you. Forgive me for going over my time. Amen. But God is good all the time and all the time, God is good. I'm praying that you have, have, have just embraced something on today to know that we have a message of nothing new under the sun. That we're not surprised that God is still sovereign. 
He still sits high and God still looks low. Amen. Do you love him today? Do you love him? Amen. But let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. If, you, if this time has been a blessing to you, amen, reach out to us at gntbckc.org. That's gntbc.org. You can leave a comment, request prayer. If you'd like to give a gift to our ministry, you can do so through a secured uh, giving a cash app and or push pay. We thank you and praise God for your today. And we pray that you would take this message wherever you go. Sit down with your family, your children. They're wanting to know what is going on in our world today, in our own country. Share with them. Son, there's nothing, daughter, there's nothing new under the sun. God is still in control. As bad as it may be, God is still in control. And let's pray about the 17th of November, I'm sorry, of January, amen. We realize that it is the day before Martin Luther King Day. So we already see what kind of may be going to happen. Amen. That they may be looking for a fight. Folks, we need to pray. We need to pray. Did I say we need to pray? We need to pray that the, our world will not, our country will not fall into a civil war here again on our own U.S. soil. God bless you. God keep you. Is our prayer. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Whoa, my soul. Whoa, my soul. Whoa, my soul. Don't forget the bit of pain. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Whoa, my soul. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, don't forget to be her. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we just thank you once again for this time. We know that your word is true, Father God, so help us to hide your word in our heart that we might not say it against thee. And help us, Father God, to go from this place knowing, Lord, that there's nothing new under the sun. And help us, Lord, to... Know that you're still God, and beside you there is no other. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And all God's people say, and forget not, and forget not, and forget not all the Lord's benefits. Don't forget his bit of faith. God bless you. And God keep you is our prayer to our conference callers and to Amen. those of you on Facebook. God bless you this day. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you.